and this is Toto Edoeta walking you through this little volume here How to Read Music on Guitar for Keen Enthusiasts Volume 1 um, Reading in the Stave so this actually shows us here um, the stave right and the tab below so in this volume we're going to talk about reading notes in the stave another volume will talk about reading notes below the stave Another volume will talk about reading notes above the stave. In another volume, we're going to be talking about notes that are in the spaces. And in volume five, we're going to be talking about notes that are on the lines. So in this series, you're just going to go through one aspect at a time. So let's just move this along and let's just expand this out a bit. So I'm not going to walk you through every single detail. But um, <clears throat> there's 13 little exercises in here. And each one should take about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so all you're really going to be doing is experiencing 12 different ways to read, write, and play the notes in the stave and on tab. And the focus of this book is reading and writing the notes in the stave and tab and how to read and write them in the stave and on the tab. So later books will talk about notes below the tab and above the tab. So notice that this is an extremely narrow focus, a deliberately narrow focus, so that your mind can focus on a narrow chunk, a specific skill, and master that skill. And you'll master those skills through an eight-step process. And these steps are outlined in the model lessons. So... Um, you just follow these steps for each lesson. Oops, let's just come back here. Right, and I'll walk you through those. Um, you're going to need a pencil and a razor, not a pen. And so you're going to do these following tasks, and I'll leave you to read those because we'll demonstrate that in a moment. Okay. So for um, seven out of eight of those steps, right, you are using your pencil and you are writing. You're writing notes on the stave, uh, on the stave above each note. You're writing notes on guitar tab and you're writing in the fingering for each of these notes. So for seven steps, you're just writing, writing, writing. Just writing, 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 and just writing, writing, and writing. <clears throat> so then in one step, you'll be mentally writing as you imagine and visualize all the writing you've done with your muscles and body. Then in one step only, you take out your guitar and feel each note out of tempo. Okay? And you talk each note aloud by describing it and naming it as you play each note. Now, why would you want to do that? So that your mind and body coordinate together on your instrument and imprint the information in both your brain and your motor system simultaneously. So with that introduction, um, there'll be a few things in here that uh, that might distract you, okay? But let's just check out what you what what you're not going to be doing in those lessons. And these lessons are just observing, memorizing, and writing. That's it. They're not scale lessons. They're not key signature lessons. They are just observing, memorizing, and writing notation in the stave lesson. They're not harmony lessons. They're not modal scale lessons. They're not sight reading on the guitar lessons. These lessons are nothing but memorizing, uh, are nothing but observing, memorizing, so observing, memorizing, and writing notation in the stave and tab. That's all they are. So you do not, you are not required to know modes. You're not required to know key signatures. You're not required to know harmony. You're not required to know or do anything but simply observe, memorize, and write notation in the stave and tabs. So with that, stay focused and enjoy. So here we have here the, um, the model lesson. Uh, one second, right. So here's the model lesson, and you're going to learn the eight steps that you'll use to um, to do this lesson. 
So first thing you gotta do is name the notes on the stave and we've gone through and done that, right? So here's E, F, so we we'll name these all up here. <clears throat> E's on, so there's five lines on the stave, right? One, two, three, four, five, and they're named. First line is called E, second one is G, middle line is B, fourth line is D, and the fifth line is F. And then space-wise, first space is F, right, which is right here, is F, second space is A, third space is E, fourth space is E. So you got F, A, C, and E. And they're all the space names. And then we come and take the lines, E, G, B, D, and the top line is an F, but we haven't got a note on it, so it's this note line here. Okay, so E, G, B, D, and F, so it's E, G, B, D. They're on the lines. So you get lines and spaces, right? So it's more just going up these alphabetically, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E. So you're going to name the notes. Then you're going to write the tab position on each note. And here they all are. So here's E's on D2. So we've got on the tab, this is the E string. This is the A string. This one is the D string. Oops, doesn't want to go that far. D string. There's the G. This one is the B. And the top one is the E. Okay. Or if we do it here, E, well, elephants and dogs got big ears. So elephants, which is the sky, and dogs got big ears. So this E here is on D2. So E is on D2, F is on D3, G is on G open, A is on G2, B is on B open, C is on B1, D is on B3, and E is on E0, and back down the, then back down the road they come again. Okay, then step three, you're going to, you're going to write the fingering under each tab note, which is what you have here, right? So this this particular fingering is the same as the fret notes, and we just write that in. Okay, so now it's your turn to um, do this all from memory. Okay. Step four, you're going to write the notation of stave note from memory. So you're going to write the e in here. Sorry, the e on this line. F in this space, G on this line, A on that space, B on this spa line, C in this space, D on that line, E on that space, and then do the same, going back down again. Okay, then you're going to write the stave notes of tab 4 by memory, so that'll be you know, E, F, G, a, B, C, D, E. Alright, so that's step five that you've just done. Step six, you're going to write the number and tab under here. So E will be on D2. Uh, F is on D3. G is on G open. A is on G2. B is on B open, C is on B1, uh, D is on B3, and E is on E open. Then you do the same going back down there, right? Then you're going to do the right, so there's uh, step five you've just done, sorry. Then step six you're going to write in the fingering, which in this case is the same as 
the frets. It's not always, but in this case it is. Okay, and then we go back and then take the next step and, um, and the next step is step 7 because you've already done the tab here uh, you've done the tab and you've done the fingering right you now know where the notes are on the guitar tab so now you're going to take just on your guitar you're going to finger the guitar tab notes by memory once only okay and that's all you're doing is just feeling them on the guitar then step eight, you're going to take a minute break before you move on to the next exercise. So that's it, and off we go here through the uh, through the rest of the lessons. Now, I just better alert you to a couple of things here. Okay, so you'll see this symbol here. That means F sharp. Okay, so this F here and that one there won't be F natural, it's going to be F sharp. So I won't explain why, I just simply point it out to you. So what this means is that when you see an F sharp, it means wherever there's an F below, in or above the stave, that becomes an F sharp. Okay, then on to the next one. Right, so you see the F sharp there. Now we have got two here. Right, so we've got an F sharp, and then this guy here, that's a C sharp. So it means that F, F is going to be sharp, and the C is going to be sharp, that C will be sharp, and that will be sharp. So that matters when you name the notes in the stave and also when you tab the position on the stave on each note. Okay, so that's for that exercise. And moving right along. So that's all in the key of D. Um, and again, although I've got all these labels up here, they don't matter to you, they really just matter to, to the teacher or to the author. Okay, all you need to be concerned about is these notes here and these ones here. Okay, so here you see this F sharp again, and you see the C sharp again. Now there's a new sharp, and it's called G sharp. Okay, so as well as the F being sharp, now the G will be sharp, and the C will be sharp. Come back the other way, the C sharp, the G is sharp, and the F is sharp. And that's the same for all of Lesson 4. Lesson 5. You see where there's another sharp now. So you've got F sharp, which we've seen, C sharp, G sharp. And this guy here, the last one, is D sharp. Okay, so F is sharp, G is sharp, C is sharp, and D is sharp. And same when you come down the other way. D sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and F sharp. Okay, so there's the sharps for lesson five, and those are called accidentals. Then in lesson six, there's five sharps, right? So you've got F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and this last sharp here is A sharp. So you've got five sharps, so five out of these eight notes are sharp. So you've got F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. So in this way, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. So those are the sharps for lesson six. Lesson seven. Okay, so what you see here... This whole thing, by the way, is called a key signature. So what we have here are flats. Okay. And there are six of them. So that means only two of these aren't going to be flatted. So we've got B flat. Right, so if I give you the order, let's do it like B, E, A, 
D, G, and C. These are the flats in this key signature. So that's the order B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. So that's how it's written there. Okay, so I'll just start keeping it in the same order, it makes it easier. So here's B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. Okay. And so coming back the other way, it's B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. And those are the five there. So these are the accidentals in this key, which um, is just by the by, because all you're really remembering is writing these out, and then it, um, it's important to know when it comes to naming the notes, then that's what this key signature will tell you, is what kind of B it is, what kind of E it is, what kind of A it is, what kind of D it is, what kind of G it is, and what kind of C it is. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now we're in lesson eight, and with the sharps, um, with the sharps we added the sharps as we go, but with the flats we take them away. So we've got five here: B, E, A, D, G, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. So I remember this as like a B G. Okay, then we come through and name these things. Uh, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. So those are the accidentals in lesson 8. Here are the accidentals in lesson nine. Four of them. Guess what they are? B, E, A, D. So there's an easy word to remember. So we come through when we come through and name these: uh, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. But you'll go through and write the whole thing in there, which you can do because you've got a pencil and I can't do it because I've got this thing. Okay, and same on this side, B flat, E flat, and there's E flat up there, there's E flat over there, A flat, D flat, and those are all the flats in lesson 9. Lesson 10, lesson 10, there's three of these, B, E, A. Okay, so you've got a B, E, and there's an E is there as well and A flat, B flat, E flat, E flat, A flat. And those are the flats in lesson 10. And the flats in lesson 11, there's two of them, B and E. Right, so there's B flat here, E flat and E flat, B flat, E flat and E flat. And again, these matter when you name the notes up here above each note. Okay, so those are the accidentals for lesson 11. And lesson 12, there's one flat. Oops, there's an error there, that shouldn't be there. B flat, okay, so there's only one flat and that's B flat, and simply B flat there. And that's the accidental in lesson 12, and that E flat that you saw just behind the screen that I've blocked out there, do the same on your sheet and then ignore it. And lesson 13, key of C. Right. Nothing, they're all naturals. So there's no flats or sharps on these, these are all naturals. Going from E up to E, E back down to E. So that's your walk through this, um, this little book. And as I say, it shouldn't. It shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to do each page. And that's on average, right? There are variables involved in that. And um, there's an article at the back here, whether you sh should 
new guitar players read music or not. Okay, and go through and check that out. And we're just talking about how music notation is, is most used and music that's not defined by guitar, notably jazz and some pop styles. Uh, it's mostly used, yeah, yeah, right. And in those styles, music's been transmitted through the centuries by notation, and the tradition of learning music by re reading has evolved. Now, many virtuoso players read music. So think Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Frank Zappa, and many virtuosos do not. Think Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen. So guitar players who want to arrange music for instruments other than guitar need to read and write music to communicate with those other musicians. Those other musicians just don't do guitar tap, right? Guitar players who want to play music outside their immediate genres need to read music. Now, the best guitar transcriptions are done by transcribers who can read music. Conversely, a great way to learn to write music is by transcribing music. Really, really important. So, when does a guitar player need to read music? Okay, uh, when you're playing, sorry, when does a guitar player not need to read music? Well, when you're playing guitar defined music, like rock, pop, blues, metal, shred, and many others, often you don't need to read music, you just need to read and write tab. As an instrument that came to prominence in the age of radio, guitar is a social instrument that is mostly socially taught friend to friend, family member to family member. Then with the advent of television, video and internet, guitar learning by ear, listening to your desired song over and over by over and over, or by eye, watching a good player amongst your friends, family, on YouTube or on your DVD collection, has intensified. So with the advent of radio, uh, video and internet, learning by ear or by eye has intensified. So between guitar players, the notation of choice is guitar tab. Right, backed by video or audio to ensure they learn the desired rhythm. So, question arises, should you read music? This is another version of the basic question, should you read? You can answer no, and it's true that you can get by without reading, as long as you don't mind being illiterate, earning really low pay all your life, being shut out of any opportunity program, not being able to afford to live, and being worn down by the daily grind way before your time. Or you could answer yes. <clears throat> and suddenly, whole worlds of imagination and creativity open up to you. You have the key that unlocks doors to opportunity, comfortable lifestyle, social security, prosperity and longevity. Similarly with reading music. You can get by one horizon without reading music. Or you can learn to read and go beyond horizon after horizon. Just because you can read the signs on the doors. Reading music is, is not just for the continuously gigging player. I didn't read music for the first 15 years of my guitar life. I've read music now for the last 30 years. I just keep playing and playing and playing. People who started playing the same time as I do who do not read, not only don't play anymore, but worse, they struggle to remember ever youthfully playing music at all. And that, my friends, is... A, that is very sad. So that's that little article right there. And then at the end here, here's a quick and dirty harmony lesson, which I won't take you through now, but it's there for your reference. Okay, and that ends this short video on this um, on this manual, how to go through it and how to read uh, music on guitar for keen, for keen guitarists. And this has been Volume 1 in the Stave. That ends this video. Hope you have fun.